Afternoon everyone, today we are looking at a Game Boy Advance emulator called the MGBA. This is a standalone emulator unlike the RetroArch, which you can use multiple emulators under one umbrella, which is the RetroArch. I will load up the RetroArch as well to do a small comparison between both of them. All the links will be in the description below, so without further ado, let's begin. So from the main website, what you want to do is click Downloads. You want to scroll all the way down to where it says Homebrew, and underneath Homebrew, you want to find your system, which is the PlayStation Vita. It's a .7-zip file, so you're going to be needing WinZip, WinRare, or I think 7-zip is another program. So once you extract the files, drag the folder to the desktop, or just open the folder within the um, WinRare, WinZip program, and just take the .vpk file, and you want to drag that to the desktop or wherever you want to place it. I prefer the desktop because it's so much easier um, during the FTP modes. Um, so once that's done, you can delete the folder itself, and let's head over to the PlayStation Vita. So once over at the Vita, load up the Vita shell. Give this a few seconds to load up. You want to hit the select button. Once you hit the select button, the FTP numbers will pop up in the message. After that, you want to head back over to the PC side of things. So once here, load up your FTP client, which mine is FileZilla. Now, where it says host, you want to enter in the FTP numbers that were that was displayed within the message on the Vita. So once that's loaded and you're connected, search for UX0. And I'm going to scroll down to my VPK folder. I suggest everybody make one just so it's organized, but it's totally up to you. You don't have to listen to me. Find your VPK file that you just downloaded MGBA for. Transfer that over. Once that is transferred, you could close out of the FTP program. Or you could just leave it running. Once over at the Vita, close out of this message. And you want to scroll down to UX0. I'm going to find my VPK folder. Install the VPK. Give it like 10 seconds. It's complete. You now you're more than welcome to leave the file on the Vita itself or delete it because you don't need it. I always delete mine. And I'm just going to reboot my system. Once the Vita reboots, go back to your live area. Now once here, scroll down and you'll see the MGBA icon or bubble. Load that up. It is quick. It's awesome. Scroll down to where you keep your ROMs. Um, I keep mine under a folder. Then underneath that, it says uh, Game Boy Advance. You're also able to play Game Boy Color and regular Game Boy games on this. So please keep that in mind. Unfortunately, you can't use the right bumper to scroll down. It would be nice. Um, especially you could skip like a bunch of f files all at once to get down to the game that you want. You can't use the left either. You could use the D-pad. Or what I found is that you could use um, the touchscreen which is a hell of a lot easier. So what's the one thing people you, you think of when somebody says Nintendo? Come on, you could do it. Maybe Zelda, maybe Donkey Kong, maybe Kirby? Nope, Super Mario, or Mario. I'll show you uh, what this game looks like through the MGBA. So it loads up like this, and don't worry, you could change the screen setting as well. You could get rid of you could get rid of these uh, borders if you'd like. Um, the way to do it is you have to hit the triangle, and that brings up um, a little sub menu, and you could go from there to change um, things out within the application or the plugin or whatever you want to call it, emulator itself. And it looks good too. There you go. So the X button is to jump. 
I think it looks great playing through the Vita like this. And if you want to change like the screen size and stuff like that, um, just hit the uh, triangle button. Not the triangle, I'm sorry, the uh, square. So I just hit the triangle button right now, and this is what the little menu comes up to. And there's a list of stuff you could config. But the only thing I don't like is that mostly the on and off is so like scrunched to the right hand side. It doesn't look good. It's like offsetting. It's off putting. I don't know how to change that. I didn't really go into depth. I should have. I do apologize. But this was just something quick that I wanted to do. So you can tell right here, I'm just trying different things and stuff like that. But if you hit start, uh, this menu pops up to continue and exit and sleep and save. Um, if you want to exit out of the game, just hit triangle and hit exit game. Otherwise, you could go back to the live area, close out the application, jump back into the MGBA, and your game will continue from where you left off, which is kind of rad. So like I said, if you hit the square button, you could change the borders. But I'm sure there's documentation within that website that I'm going to be linking down below um, on the other um, things you can config within the emulator itself. So as you can tell, I just backed out. I just swiped it, closed it. Um, now if you actually went back in, it'll just put you back to wherever you were last, which is cool. So I'm going to load up RetroArch, and I'm going to show you um, if there's any differences or anything like that. See, this is rad because it, it skips a bunch of games and stuff like that. If you hit hold the shoulder button or the bumper or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to load up the same game, the Super Mario. But first, got to pick which emulator I want to use. See, that's the only thing I don't really care about RetroArch because it depends. Some games work best with certain uh, cores and some don't. So you get a, it's a trial and error type of thing. But I would rather just have a single emulator that can play a game perfectly fine without any glitches or anything like that. So, you could, so as you could tell before, it pops up with the same information. As you're going to see here on the main menu, um, I go back and forth because within RetroArch, for some reason, the buttons for this game are backwards. So, zero or O button is to accept, is to start. and So, it's going to be jump. So, the X button isn't going to be jump like uh, it was on the MGBA. Unless I could go to um, the little menu and change the configuration file, um, configuration buttons and stuff like that. So yeah, as you can tell, I'm having a little hard time. I'm having a hard time figuring out the game. See, I died right there. I should have jumped. I should have hit the X button, which I did. Because I'm used to the MGBA. Until I found out X is not to jump. The O button's to jump. So it looks the same. Graphics look great. The sound quality is great, too. So I got no complaints. Hit the start button and that little message pops up. Sleep, save, and quit. While making this video, I decided to go back into the RetroArch and I decided to pull up the uh, menu that is shown here. Um, the quick menu I have is the L and R. Well, the two right bump, two two bumpers at the same time that bring that brings up that tiny little transparent menu um, I actually took the time I figured out how you could change the um, button um, assignment so just follow just look at those two red uh, arrows and just copy that and you'll be good to go your controls will be exactly like the emulator which is the MGBA so I just figured I'd give that tip out and try to make things easier for you guys I am unsure if 
those controls will be permanently um, stuck within just that Super Mario game or with throughout the whole um, Game Boy Advance ROMs themselves. I don't even know. I didn't I didn't check. I, I do apologize. I should have. Um, but if I go back and check, I'll definitely leave a, a note within the description below letting you guys know that um, those swap buttons do work on other games. But just follow that picture and you'll be good to go, guys. Thank you. Well, there you go, guys. Um, I showed you the MGBA emulator for the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, and the Game Boy Color that you could play all under one roof, which is rad. Um, fortunately, you can't do Nintendo or Super Nintendo. Um, I showed you the RetroArch. Um, I'm kind of... I think I'm going to be honest, and I think I'm going to pick the MGBA emulator, the standalone... Um, I just, I don't know. There's something about it. I, I think because it loads quickly. It's quick. It's simple. You don't have to go through a bunch of menus like RetroArch and stuff like that. But on the other hand, RetroArch is also kind of rad because you could have other emulators under one umbrella, under one application. So that's kind of mint too. So, but my head definitely goes off to the MGBA. I gotta give my uh, my thanks to whoever made that. Either one guy or many people, just thank you. I, I do like the MGBA a little bit better. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. I love to hear your thoughts, concerns about it. Um, please leave a comment below or do whatever you have to. So thanks, guys.